Welcome to Chatting 88 at 8 with Curtis LaBelle here. My name is Curtis, and I'm your host. We have a very special show for you tonight, um, and uh, I, I wanted to talk about why I wanted to do Chatting 88. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, so the new show, yes, very exciting, uh, and what's in store for tonight as our special guest and, and all that. I'm so excited. I have my piano here, and if I'm all over the place, uh, welcome to the first if you're just starting to watch, welcome to the new Chat and 88 show uh, with Curtis LaBelle, your host. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm going to talk about some exciting news on the shot. Very exciting. And uh, of course, I also have um, two singles coming out within the next month. So that's very uh, time consuming as well, because that's also a full time job. This coffee's really hot. All right. Um, Chat in 88. You know, there was somebody that I was speaking to that uh, had said, I should do a talk show a long time ago, years ago. And I said, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. And um, then uh, years go by and lo and behold, somebody from the shot uh, had mentioned to me and said, you know, Curtis, you'd be really good at doing a talk show. Uh, and I went, huh, light bulb, and something came off uh, in the back of my head, and I went, you know what, you're right. So I put those two together, and that's kind of why I wanted to do it. And plus, I had a lot of fun doing the shows with um, all the artists from The Shot and learning all different kinds of music. I'm so amazed at all of the different styles, uh, new styles of music that I can't even put into categories. And I have no idea how they're, you know, it's a lot of work branding yourself. And that's something that I'm learning as well as an artist here. And so, um, you know, uh, we're just gonna go with the flow. Uh, and uh, that's all I can do. So speaking of, uh, as an artist, shot. I am... Um... I'm so excited. I'm very happy to announce that I have made it into the top 40 of the shot remastered 2020 season eight. It is a national competition that is uh, for artist development. And it's, a, it's kind of a it's it's a competition, but it's also a program. And it's been it's been really cool watching how they have been developing, uh, even though they've this is season eight. So they've done this for eight years. It's really um Really, I'm learning a lot on the other side of it, watching them um, having to develop also because everything's virtually uh, being done since of COVID. Very disappointing. However, there's light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and uh, it's been an interesting journey doing this competition uh, virtually because we have never met and I've been, I've only been in it for about two and a half months and there's other contestants that have been in it now for three and a half, four months because they did auditions in the first round and the second round of auditions is what I was in. So at any rate, blah, 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 moving ahead. Uh, we are seeing each other through a screen. So it's, it's, it's a bit going to be uh, um, freaky, I suppose, when we see the person face to face. And I say that simply because of an experience that I had um, doing uh, um, a course. I was teaching a course that uh, a choir and uh, we haven't seen each other and all of a sudden we run into each other after a month and a bit and we, I didn't know how to react because <laughs> I hadn't seen this person forever. We can't, we can't hug, we can't high five, we can't shake hands. So it's like waving like this and then kind of, you know, do we even talk to each other sort of thing? So it's really, I, I, I felt it surreal when we saw each other so i can just imagine what it's going to be like when we do eventually meet each other of all these artists in line now there was a hundred people that were in this last round of the shot and 40 people made it through um i give my um best and and congrats to all the individuals that were in the shot that didn't make it through to the top 40. i have made friends with you and i have gotten to know you some of you personally and i honor you and i think you are all amazing uh, I I want to stay in touch, and I think it's going to be important that we do, especially in this digital age where we can. 
Uh, I think we'd be ignorant not to. And I am so excited to see where your journeys are going as well. You know, this, you know, not to see, this isn't the end. I know that if I didn't make it, it's not the end for me. We keep trucking ahead. We keep forging ahead as we stumble along through life's greatest treasures. Um, that being said, I truly, truly love you all. But I'm also very excited to be in the top 40 myself. It's going to be a lot of fun. Very exciting. Um, so uh, this is going along well, actually. <clears throat> Moving on to, uh, so just a little bit there on the shot. I have no idea what it's going to be like. We move back together uh, again uh, virtually on the 19th of September, I believe, where we start having label meetings with uh, different labels and different uh, recording labels and artists and managers and have interviews and talk about that. That'll be interesting. I don't know. I've always kind of been myself as a label, right? That's something we can talk about. Jesse Rhodes, ladies and gentlemen, will be joining us today. He is a local here in Red Deer, Alberta. And uh, I'll read a little blurb about him uh, before he gets up on here. He's in the waiting room. I'm very excited about him, so we might get him in here sooner. I'm not too sure. He's probably watching on Facebook as well. Uh, if you'd like to hear, uh, see some special guests, we have some really great guests from across the country coming in. I'm, I've scheduled all the way up till the end of September, so this is very exciting, actually. Jesse being our first, and um, there's some uh, artists that you've never met, and some artists that I have never dreamed that I would ever be able to talk to that are very exciting for me as well, that I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, I get to interview, interview this person. So that's pretty cool. Um, top 40, talking to labels. Moving on. Jesse Rhodes. I'm just going to read this a little bit here for you. Jesse Rhodes is a blues rock folk indie performer who has done his fair share of paying his dues, opening and touring with such acts as The Lazies, One Bad Son, The Odds, The Northern Pikes, The Grapes of Wrath, Monster Truck, The Age of Electric, The Wild, Holly McNarland, Eco Line Crush, Coal Creek Boys, Wild Tea in the Spirit, Carla Luft, Carson Cole, Clayton Bellamy of the Roadhammers, Tupelo Honey, Retrograde, The Smalls, your mum's sister, your aunt's dog, McQuaig, to name of just a few of them. <laughs> oh my goodness, I added those last two in there. In 2015, Jesse was awarded the title monster of Blues Folk Rock for the 6th Annual American Music Awards. This man is absolutely amazing. We're going to get him in here in two seconds. I have had the opportunity to... Uh, this, I'm, I'm super great friends with this gentleman. His family is fantastic. He is, um, he's a family man. He's a businessman. He is absolutely um, everything in a nutshell, and uh, including him because he's also a bit of a nut. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I could get a round of applause, please, from wherever you are, even though we're not going to hear it, please welcome Mr. Jesse Rhodes into the room. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, Yes, we can hear you, Jesse. Are you? Do you have? Uh, do you I have? Like a... at Siri. Yeah, I was. I was able to see myself a second ago. Oh, oh hey! Hey, there we are. Oh, this is so dope. How are you? I'm fabulous. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. I've been learning in these Zoom meetings and interviews that you can't talk to the person on the screen. You got to talk to your own picture because otherwise you're looking down, right? <laughs> it's true. It's so funny because I, I caught myself the last couple of times there just before I, I brought you in. I'm looking uh, at myself and then I realized I'm, I'm not looking into anybody's eyes. They're all watching me look yeah. down. No, it's, it's a learning curve for sure, for sure. Yeah, and it's really cool. We're live on Facebook right now too through Zoom. Neat. So that's neat. Well, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. I uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, so here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to ask you some straight up questions. Um, and uh, we're going to, then we're also going to hear you do a couple of tunes for us. Um, so okay. a generic question, let it be a generic answer. If it's an in-depth question. You're asking let, the questions, eh? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm asking <laughs> the questions now. Tables have turned. <laughs> so um, straight up, uh, where are you from? Uh, I was born in Lethbridge, Alberta, and then I was raised kind of on that Highway 3 mark for quite some time, Raymond, Tabor, 
Finn Castle area, which is, I say Tabor, but it's kind of about five, 10 minutes just uh, east of Tabor. And um, yeah, I mean, I grew up in a relatively quite small community and, you know, I shoveled the pens every day before school. And uh, yeah, you know, Alberta, I've been, I was born and raised in Alberta and I love it here. Um, I've tried to leave, but it always calls <laughs> you back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, and you know what, which brings us into speaking of Alberta, we'll get to it down the, down, down the road of a, sure. of a lovely, a great tune uh, <laughs> written by a lovely gentleman on the screen. But uh, OK, so awesome. you're from what's that? Sorry, it was, it was quite a collaboration. I don't want to take credit for that. This is one song I was honored to be a part of, but uh, I can't take all the credit in that sense by any means. So fair enough. We'll make sure we get everybody's uh, due diligence in that for sure. Um, so you're from Lethbridge. You've lived in Alberta pretty much your whole life. How old are you? I will be 39 in a couple months, I guess. Okay. Yes, this is true. And you also are recently, uh, well, I say recently, um, but it's been about a year now, I think getting close to a year. You're also engaged to a lovely lady and, yes, um, you have a beautiful family. So tell us just really quickly about that upcoming wedding arrangement and the family. Well, we, uh, we've got a whole bunch of kids when you combine it all together. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's quite a situation, but uh, it's pretty awesome. I wouldn't change it. Um, you know, all, all the kids are quite a bit older. There's a couple of younger ones, but we range anywhere from eight years old right up to 18 this month here. So it's, uh, it's pretty wild and it's, it's really cool. I mean, we we have a pretty great family and i really do love it and uh katrina's been awesome and she's pretty much kept me on track and brought me back down to earth a little bit here so you know they you know what they say <laughs> <laughs> what do they say uh, they say katrina's awesome that's what they, they say, say katrina's awesome that's exactly what i was expecting you to say katrina's a lovely lady no, she is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm I, sure I, she's watching somewhere too. She's probably right? in the house watching. <laughs> I have personally met this woman, and I can say that she is, um, she's a gem. That is for bloody sure. Um, okay, so favorite color. I got my list here. I'm a talk show host. I have my stuff. My favorite color is blue, but I I go between blue and purple quite often. But I say least blue. favorite color. Ooh. I don't know. All the colors are good. I don't have a least favorite color. Okay. What's together. your favorite favorite song? <laughs> my favorite song, dude. Right now, right now. Your favorite song right now. My favorite song right now. Um, I'd have to say it's an it's called uh, "Dark Before the Dawn" by Adam Baldwin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, go check that out, please. He's an awesome guy. Plays guitar for Matt Mays, and he's got his own couple albums. He's so great. Awesome. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is your least favorite song right now? My least favorite song, Jason Derulo. <laughs> okay. All of Jason Derulo. All of that. Oh, no, dude. No, I hope kidding. he's not watching. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I I have mad respect for him. He's, he's pretty cool. Mad uh, props. Yeah, for sure. It's just, yeah. It's just not your jam right now. You're not jiving with right it. Now, right, right now, right now, right now. That's what I say. Right now. You know, <laughs> okay. So who's it's... your who's your favorite artist right now? Oh, my favorite artist all the time. I think is uh, kind of goes. It, it never changes really. I, I've got two that kind of kick the top, and it's Matt Mays and the Gaslight Anthem. They're okay. they're just right on. amazing songwriters. So. <laughs> Who's your least favorite artist right now or of all time? Ah, uh, least favorite of all time. I'm going to get some heat on this one, but Kiss for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, sure. well, I'm sure there's a reason for that. We're allowed to have an opinion. We're not. We're allowed yeah, to not like music. Hey, I don't not like the guys that like Kiss. It's not, you know, they're still allowed to have a beer and hang out. That's, you know. Hey, man, Black Pigeon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, your biggest influence in music, uh, where did that come from? At what age were you kind of brought to music and the guitar and be like, yeah, this is the jam. This is my life. This is my choice. This is where I'm going. This is the red pill that I've taken. And here I am. 
Well, um, honestly, when I was a kid, my dad used to play records all the time and, uh, you know, at all hours of the day. And, uh, yeah, he was into Hendrix and that kind of stuff really when I was really young. And I just remember hearing that stuff and thinking like, what is this? Like, what is this stuff? I always wanted to be a musician, but I think it kind of really clicked when, you know, I was hearing those Hendrix records and that kind of tied into, uh, of course, if you go down the rabbit hole, a lot of Hendrix songs, uh, Bob Dylan, that kind of stuff, it all kind of meld somewhere together and it, it just opened this whole door of creativity so i gotta say it was right from a young early age i was obsessed with elvis and jerry lee lewis and then i heard uh you know my dad playing these Re hendrix records and stuff and then my sister was listening to anthrax and nine inch nails and i was like there's too much stuff going on it's crazy but cacophony of that, stuff yeah i knew that i wanted to do that all of it because i loved it all so it was it was pretty clear. Nice, nice. And so uh, easy pill to swallow. Yeah. And it's working out for you. Easy pill to swallow, not necessarily an easy path to walk, you know, uh, as, or to pass the pill too. you know, whatever's yeah. going through. <laughs> At the end of the day, I mean, you, you do give up a lot going full time and kind of doing that. And I've been doing I've been doing music for 22 years now. So it's it's crazy. Yeah. That's a, that's a long time. And speaking of music for 22 years, um, there are just, uh, just to change up a little bit from talking, uh, we're going to go into uh, Sweet Alberta and your fundraiser and all that stuff in, in a little bit here. But I wanted to uh, just shift the, just take a mental shift here and, and go to some music. So would okay. you have a, we'd like, you are a, you're a phenomenal singer songwriter. I, 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 got, I got this. Got this guy strapped in. Right we got there, Gilmore Shane. Guitars. Oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know Gilmore Guitars, you can, f first of all, I know we're, we're plugging and we, I, I love plugging. Any any plug is good. Uh, but no, Jesse is a oh, spokes. Friggin' angel to me, man. Oh, no doubt. I know that for sure. Uh, Dave is amazing. And um, Gilmore Guitars. Uh, what is the website for that? GilmoreGuitars.ca? GilmoreGuitars.ca or .net, whichever or one .net. You There you go. Check it out. If you wanted to... Uh, just really quickly, Jesse, your comparison on Gilmore to what other guitars you've played, and why do you why do you like a Gilmore very much? Yeah, why do you play on a Gilmore? Uh, well, first and foremost, every single one's made by hand, and I mean that's pretty crazy that somebody puts that kind of love into hand carving something like this. And uh, second of all, I mean they're really great guitars, and uh, they sound amazing. And Dave does a lot for the community on so many other levels as well with guitars sure for kids and such and um you know i i just really love it as far as any other guitar goes i mean every single one is one of a kind truly and uh you know they sound amazing they play amazing they feel good they're just good guitars and david is like he just hooks me up and he's been supporting me for almost 10 years now so well you know what from david hooking you up why don't you hook us up with that lovely sound and an original of yours and play us into something uh, that uh, we will always remember well i'm gonna play you one uh off of uh you can find it online pretty much anywhere but uh it's called this is a dream and i i wrote it on this gilmore guitar for sure a couple of years ago nice <laughs> This old darkness of mine It's gonna find a place inside Dancing in the moonlight for free I don't mind, that's alright by me Shadows in the sunshine on fire A burning little heart's desire I can't wake up I'm gonna scream 
Somebody tell me this is a dream. Mm -hmm. I can't wake up. I'm gonna scream. Somebody tell me this is a dream. Little your taxi of faith. Believe in what you can't see or you break. Crickets on a lily pad in the night. I'm tripping on a green one, roll tight. The stars in the sky, they make it hard. I'm staring out a window too far. Hey. I can't wake up, I'm gonna scream. Somebody tell me this is a dream, yeah, yeah. I can't wake up, I'm gonna scream. Somebody tell me this is a dream. Empty little wine bottle getting faded. Sugar, sugar, sweet stuff. I catch you, catch you, catch you, I guess we'll see you. The spring is here, but the winter never left me. Listen to my heart being what's mine, it's yours. And then a little birdie comes along and says, hey, what for real? I can't wake up, I'm gonna scream. Somebody tell me this is a dream, I hear. I can't wake up, I'm gonna scream. Somebody tell me this is a dream. Listen to my heartbeat, what's mine is yours. Then a little birdie comes along and says, Hey, what for? There you go. Outstanding. Thanks, man. Yay! No, um, when did you? How long? What year did you? When did you write that? Uh I guess that's a couple of years ago now. Right on. It's a couple of years for sure. I released that as like a live off the floor that I did with uh, my my other buddy, my other brother Charlie Jacobson, and, who was playing uh, on Raw Street today. He was playing on Raw Street today, and I, I, I ran spot. into him, um, right. as we all should. Moving on to how many tattoos do you have? Careful, there's a lot of people out there. For God's sake. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, lots. They're everywhere. Okay. It's, an, um, it's a problem. It's a problem that about, I have. <laughs> tell us. I know. I just got a new tattoo myself, so I can definitely. I can tell, but I only have three. I don't, I can count. I don't, I only have three tattoos. You have 30,000 probably. Um, take us down the road of uh, your cooking and your gourmet world of hot dogs about that venture. Oh, you want to talk about gourmet hot dogs? Yeah, eh? I do. Just a quick little snippet on the uh, segment on gourmet hot dogs here, my friend. Uh, tell me about no. your favorite gourmet hot dog and your least favorite gourmet hot dog. 
My most favorite, I have to say to this day, oh man, has got to be the Captain Dog, like hands down. Peanut butter, Captain Crunch. Peanut butter, jam, little Captain Crunch and some jalapeno straws on top. It's just crazy. It's crazy. Okay. My least one you don't favorite. Care. I don't have a least favorite though. What about just a dog and a bun? Well, that like no self-respecting person eats a dog like a hot dog with a bun plain. That's not even a thing. Well, if they put butter on it. No, you don't put butter. <laughs> no, no, you don't put butter What's on your favorite dog. smell? Oh, um, you know, I love the smell of coconuts. Honestly, I do. Oh, I love coconut too. What's your least favorite smell? Oh, brute. <laughs> What's your least favorite? What's your what? What was one thing you hate the most about habitual people? Like, what is something that really pisses you off? Well, anyone that knows me knows that I run on my own clock. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, they don't piss me off. I piss them off. That's how that works. <laughs> Reverse effect. I see. I see. I see. Exactly. What is the nicest I thing somebody? It, I always get to where I'm going. It just you, takes you, me again, over. like. As Gandalf said, you arrive precisely when you mean to. Hey, exactly. What is, oh, I, what, was, what was I just going to say? It, it's a question that popped into my head. I didn't write it down. What is, ah, oh, I can't remember it. Anyway, let's move on to um, something that's dear to your heart uh, that you've kind of attached a little bit to with this song that you have coming out. So we'll talk about the song first, and then we'll talk about uh, the fundraiser. Uh, which is something that you do yearly. And um, I think it's a great thing and we'll push it as much as we can. But first the song, you have this wonderful uh, collaborative song that you've been working on with some individuals. Tell us about it. What's the name of it? Take us down the road of this journey. And uh, um, I know we can't hear it, but uh, whatever you can in order to Soon. tell us about it. Soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's called Sweet Alberta. And uh, you know, uh, my bass player, Scotty, Scott Weiber, he great guy. Was living over in England for almost 15 years, and I think he was homesick a little bit, and started writing, and had this song called "Sweet Alberta" in the bag that him and uh, another guy, Jake Jake Field from London, he him and Scotty put it together, and you know, it just kind of morphed into this thing. When I did that Bruce Coburn cover, Scott asked me, he said, "Hey man, we should get Jake to do the keys on this," and I thought. You know if he's available i did ask somebody i did <laughs> yes i do remember that but maybe maybe it was fate because uh jake was like oh this is great and then you know about a month later i got an email from scotty late one night saying hey check out this song you know jake and i have been talking we really think you should do it it's a great tune and i thought okay and i i pressed play and it was like straight up Brooks and Dunn country. It's <laughs> like, whoa, because they had a they had a demo from years ago and it was amazing. And I was like, why don't you guys just release this? This is great, you know, but <laughs> uh, it was just a demo and they thought, you know, we really want an artist to take it and, and help us uh, kind of finish it up and put that stamp on it. So it was really a cool experience. We did the vocals and the bass. Uh, we did the vocals in my studio here and Scotty did the bass at his place, and Jake did the drums and guitars all in London, England. And then we sent it down to Los Angeles to get mixed and mastered with uh, a guy named Doug. And it was just like, oh man, it came back and it was just smoking hot. So it, it's got a really cool rock and roll Tom Petty style vibe to it. And uh, it's, it's just a really cool song. It was super challenging. Um, normally when I'm recording myself, I like to mask my my voice you know it, it's as a singer you know it's your instrument and you you want to hide behind as many different other things as you can but <laughs> these guys weren't having it they weren't having any of it they wanted it right up there so <laughs> raw was, and in it, your face yeah i mean it was one of those things where you know uh it's when you push to the part where you can't touch you know the floor that's where it's like okay you're just i think bowie said that you're just about to do something great when you can't touch the 
the bottom of the pool anymore you know that's where things are gonna start happening yeah so. yeah and that and so august 7th which is this friday this friday august 7th it comes out i'm pumped it goes everywhere we did a full format radio release with uh you know a whole bunch of stations throughout canada and of course on every platform and streaming site all that jazz I mean, a lot of people hate Spotify right now, but... Uh, no, Spotify is the way to go, man. Spotify is in. It's not the greatest in terms of recouping your costs, but it, it is a really good tool for a social media presence. And people totally. stream and people look at those numbers. And, you know, I've been very fortunate this last few months to kind of make the most of it and see... A, you know what, man? Pennies add up. Pennies add up. Yeah, so, yeah, it's it's available everywhere. Get it. Friday. Sweet Alberta, ladies and gentlemen, by Jesse Rhodes and his gang, I guess yeah, you could it, say. It was it was a, quite the effort. I mean, it was pretty amazing that uh, we were able to accomplish that intercontinental. <laughs> you so. know what? It's I also agree with the amazing with the things that I know that I have. Um, I guess I've been in ignorance to you have just knowing of what one can accomplish doing this everything digitally and and right. still getting stuff done. You know, we don't have to right. be face to face and the the age we live in allows us to do that um okay now let's let's take a look at um the um this the the fundraiser that you do and a little bit about your sister and where that hits home for you we just kind of shifted off to the other side of the emotional yeah, yeah. ledger uh, well so every year um you know officially i think this will be the third official year but we were kind of doing it for years before too just not really making it any type of official thing but this year uh so every year on my sister's birthday which is august 11th whether it's a sunday tuesday monday it doesn't matter i always try to do a show where i donate all the cash to a charity and try to do something different every year last year we did the mustard seed school lunch program and guitars for kids and the year before we did aspire special needs and so this year we decided to go with the central alberta child advocacy center which uh provide support and emotional support and therapy and stuff like that for kids who have come into contact with some bad circumstances, um, you know, in terms of. Um, Which is perfect during COVID right now, because there's a lot of the kids that are, you know, mentally stuck. Is. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a real supporter of mental health. And a lot of times when kids experience trauma uh, here. in those settings, um, you know, sexual abuse and that kind of thing, it, it becomes a huge huge problem on uh you know it's it's just insane and so the work that the advocacy center does is really important uh they lost a whole bunch of their funding this year and i thought you know it might be a cool cool way to give back i always try to do it somewhere around um you know focused on the kids so that they have um it, it's just my, I come from a huge family. My sister left behind a lot of children. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where I just felt like if I was donating something in her name. It would be uh, far cooler if it was supporting kids in some way and empowering youth to grow and giving them a voice and giving them somewhere to access resources and that kind of stuff. So we've been kind of picking a different charity every year. And uh, obviously this year with COVID, there's no huge big concert or anything. And, um, you know, so we're going to live stream and we did a nice little waffle on Facebook where, you know, we're just picking numbers and I've got some really kick butt partners who, uh, donated some really cool stuff. And we put together a staycation package, you know, a night in a King deluxe suite at the Cambridge here. We've got dinner for two at State. <laughs> I <Canadian>. laughed. <laughs> I laughed when I saw that because I was like, a girl i mean we got two queens here in this king room i don't know <laughs> so i mean yeah it's it's really cool like there's there's some serious stuff i mean sawback donated uh some pints before dinner and then stayed in maine and then we've got uh stephanie charcuterie Rose. yeah the the charcuterie board for when you're relaxing back at the suite and yeah it's, it's a great thing uh, you guys have put together something really cool it's a cool package for sure yeah for sure. and for 20 bucks yeah, pick a spot for 20 bucks and every penny, you know, I'm not taking any money for the show. There's no administration cost. I want to raise, I want to sell a hundred spots and I want to raise $2,000 and get them. A $2, I think $2, that's doable, dude. That's totally doable. If that's not doable, halfway. we're almost halfway. So, and it's only been a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. So I no, think, I think that's cool. So, 
yeah, my sister, uh, she passed away uh, several years back. And, um, you know, it was very- Yeah, what's sad. the connection, your connection on the sister? Why, 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 why with your sister on the connection of the fundraiser? Uh, well, when we were kids, so if you know me, I've always been producing and putting on shows and different stuff like that. And uh, so that was something that started very early with my sister. So her and I, uh, even as teens, like 12, 13 years old, we were putting on punk rock shows for the food bank and stuff like that in our hometown, uh, in Tabor and that kind of thing. And we were attending other shows similar to that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, it was always the mandate was we, if we were getting money in, we always had to be figuring out a way to give some of that back so that it was, you know, good good karma, good, whatever you want to call it, just putting positive out there and uh, being a good person, really being a good human. And uh, so when she passed away, uh, she's, she's a huge reason and a huge part of my musical journey as well. She was one of my hugest supporters. And uh, when she passed away, it was really kind of sudden. She just literally dropped dead out of nowhere. And uh, it was, you know, kind of one of those crazy things that happen in life. And uh yeah, I figured um, I was booked on her birthday that following year. And I thought, you know, this is crazy. And I, I dedicated the show that night to her and kind of thought, you know, this is. And, it, and then it trickled hard. down the line of keeping. And it, it just kind of turned into something. I thought, yeah. you know, I could turn this into something where we could give back in her legacy and, and just remember where it all started kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so people can, uh, they can uh, go to your uh, Facebook page, Jesse Rose. Yeah. And uh, they can just find the, the post there and they can yeah. contact you or just say, hey, look, pick a number, whichever's available. Exactly, exactly. And if you don't want to pick a number, I will gladly pick an available number for you. You know, it's it's all simple. And, and people can e-transfer, people. right? They can e-transfer Music at gmail.com. And uh, the Child Advocacy Center has opted to offer anyone a tax receipt that would like one. So it's totally claimable. And uh, yeah. You're doing something good for a great cause. Always, absolutely. And you know what? That's something that I really admire about you is that you you are always attached to something that's doing a great cause. I mean, even if it's putting hot dogs in somebody's belly. <laughs> From fundraising to the community involvement that you do. Uh, and of course, There's one- so much I, more than hot dogs though. I know, I know, I know, I know. I just, it was a big part of my life. That was a huge part of my life that I'll never forget. I'll be 80 on dialysis talking about that. With a you, never know on my head. When, you never know when here to Mars makes makes a comeback. Uh, and, you, and I'll be there with bells and whistles on. I get in a bored. robe, in a robe, in a robe. Well, you know what will happen. I'll get bored one night and all of a sudden we'll have a store. <laughs> <It'll be Yeah. laughs> That's true. And Katrina will just be like face palming. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, just really quickly here before we get into another song for you to, to wrap up our lovely evening. I've really enjoyed this. This has been a lot of fun. And I've gotten yeah. to know some things about you that I really didn't know and I've known you for a while. Um, you talked about mental awareness really quickly. You have another project that you had done out there uh, for mental awareness and just really quickly kind of say what yeah. are the, what's happening with some of the streams or percentage of the streams for that and what how's that attached again to another community? Um, so when COVID kind of hit and everybody lost all their gigs, you know, I fell into that category. And um, as you know, my year gets booked in advance, like a year in advance all the time. And my agent works really hard to do that. And this year we kind of lost everything. Everything was just gone. And um, so I kind of was thinking, well, how do we do something? I was like, well, I want to do, do a new show where I do a live stream. And I thought if I did it at on, on behalf of one of the venues that I really love to play, that that would be cool. And I started learning some songs and I thought I should learn a bare naked ladies song. And, you know, I was thinking I wanted, Kat wanted me to do uh, Brian Wilson. And I was like, no, that's, it's, that's way too hard. You know, I'm not good enough to pull that off. Then I heard <laughs> love is a dangerous time. And I thought, you know, wow, this is a cool song. I started playing it and I thought I could do this. I said, but I don't like it like this. And then, you know, I started doing my own thing. Next thing I knew, you know, it was like two days later and I hadn't slept and I was almost finished like building this track and it was turned into this epic cover of Lovers in a Dangerous Time. And I thought, you know, this is pretty cool. And my 10 year old, one of my 10 year old sons was listening to it in the studio with me. And he says, 
you know what that that's that kind of makes sense because uh you know it is kind of dangerous times right now and people just need to love each other and i was like you know well yeah I thought, okay. <laughs> Like if a 10 year old can pick up on that, I thought maybe there's an opportunity to do some sort of, uh, you know, something better with the song. And so I decided to contact CMHA and uh, we just decided, hey, let's make this song. And, uh, you know, I covered it and I actually had Bruce Coburn himself reach out to me. Mm -hmm. I saw or you talked about that. He was, uh, you know, that was really cool. That was quite the highlight to, to get a message from him. And uh, I mean, he's a friggin' legend. So he's, uh, that was, that was so awesome. And basically what happens is uh, any money that's generated from that release for its lifetime will get donated in its entirety to uh, the Canadian Mental Health Association, which has almost 360 locations across Canada. So every small town everywhere has. um, We'll be benefiting from this forever. Hopefully it gets out there and it gets crazy. I mean, that would be Props. an amazing, amazing thing. But absolutely, and I, I love, I love your attention to your. You know, it's a people buy people's why. You know, they don't buy their. They, so your why is really strong, and I, I honor that, and that is uh, that shines through. Speaking of shining through, of course, brother. Uh, speaking of shining through, we have five minutes left here. Okay. So um, you have one more song to bring us for this evening. Uh, Jesse Rhodes, you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you, my friend. I love you, brother. And I I cannot wait to actually spend more time and do a show (laughs) with you. Um, What are you going to play for us? What's that? It could happen. You never know. Hey, man. I wake up every day and something's different. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to, I'm learning the etiquette. Sorry, I'm learning the etiquette as I go. So I'm going to turn my camera off and mute myself so that I'm not distracting your performance. Okay. Well, spoil me, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to play, but I'll play something. Okay. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Drunk old soul goes into the house. He puts on the Hendrix and he plays a real loud. Wakes up his boy, says, Come on, let's go. It's way too late, and his girl said no. So he goes to his girl's room, and they said no. Wakes up his boy, says, Come on, let's go. Well, sit with me, I can hardly see, but I need someone to keep me company. One day, boy, you grow so tall, but don't go down my road. Not at all. La da 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 da, 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 la da 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 da. a crash, the table goes smash, and everything falls onto the floor. Well, his wife wakes up and she starts to yell, waving her arms like she's straight from hell. Well, she thinks she's crazy and he thinks she's mad. The little boy's eyes, yeah, it's all quite sad. He said, sit with me, I can hardly see, but I need someone to keep me company. One day, boy, you crush a child, but don't put down my road. Not at all. La da 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 da, 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 la da 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 da. And starts up a fight. The drunk goes to draw and he grabs a knife. He holds it to her throat. She yells, Please don't. The little boy cries, Well, he wants to choke, but he runs outside to the nearest bone. 
Cause a policeman says, come to my home and don't take long. It's all gone wrong, he said, don't take long. It's all gone wrong, well, sit with me, I can hardly see, but I need someone to keep me company. One day, boy, you cross our town, but don't put down my road. Not at all, yeah. One day, boy, you cross our town, yeah. One day, boy, don't put down my road, no, no. Yeah. First song I ever wrote. The first song you ever wrote. Yeah. Wow, you remembered it. Well, sometimes I pull it out. I play. I play it all the time, but usually I do like a forty-five minute guitar solo. You know how it goes, right? It's true. It's true. Um, Hour long set. Sure, that's three songs. Everybody cool? All right, good. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right, Jesse. Um, I'm going to uh, thank you so much. I'm going to bow you out here. I'm going to do a couple of other things. Uh, just really quickly, we can find you on all the lovely uh, streaming platforms from Apple to Deezer to iTunes to Spotify, Jesse Rhodes, and uh, Graffiti Music. Is that right? We can find you at? Yeah, Graffiti Music. Uh, that's my okay. agent. Yeah, he's, he's, he's okay. The, your blurb there. Yep. I don't like to pump his tires too much because... You know. I hope he's watching. <laughs> All right, Jesse. Thank you so much, okay. and uh, exactly. I, I, uh, I hope that uh, we you do really well with the fundraiser. Thanks, brother. Love okay. you. Peace. Love out. you too. Bye. All right. So Jesse uh, has uh, graced us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're still live here, so we've come to the end of our show. This has been very exciting. I'm, I'm really liking this. And uh, again, so if you want uh, to hear something, uh, you want me to give my opinion on something, talk about something, uh, have a guest that uh, you think I uh, would be best to do an interview with, I'll do the darndest I can in order to contact them and get them on board. Uh, every Wednesday at 8, this is Chatting 88 at 8 with your host, Curtis LaBelle. My name is Curtis LaBelle, and uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Now I'm going to make an ass of myself to see if I can end this at the same time. Okay, now I'm done. Bye.